Hello, welcome back to using the Eclipse Workbench. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use perspectives in Eclipse. Now, as we do different tasks in Eclipse, we may want to see a different arrangement of the workbench for each type of task. We can do this automatically using perspectives. A perspective in Eclipse does three things. First, it determines which views display on the workbench automatically. Secondly, it determines the layout of the views. And third, it determines which commands go on the main toolbar and menus. Eclipse comes with a built-in set of perspectives that we can use. We can customize these built-in perspectives and we can also make our very own. So let's get started. Here we've got Eclipse open just where we left off in the last lesson. Now so far everything we've done has been using the Java perspective. We can see here this Java is highlighted indicating we're in the Java perspective. Now we can switch perspectives in a couple different ways. We can go Window, Open Perspective. We can use the Open Perspective button and select Perspectives. Or if it happens to appear on the toolbar, we can just press the button corresponding to our perspective. So let's try it. Let's go up here and press the Debug Perspective. Now we can see that the whole screen has changed. We've got new views up here. Our edit area has moved down to here. We've got our outline view and we've got a whole nother set of views down here, console and tasks. So by pressing one button we change the whole layout of the screen. Now let's go back and press the Java Perspective button and we can see we instantly change right back to the same perspective that we started with. So we can see right away the convenience of perspectives. We can change the entire content and layout of the screen with one command. This is a really great feature of the Eclipse Workbench. Now normally when we change the layout of a perspective, Eclipse remembers this and restores the exact same layout the next time the perspective is open. For example, let's try detaching the Package Explorer and moving it to the right side of the workbench. So we'll press the Restore. We'll grab the Package Explorer and drag it outside the workbench to detach it. And then we'll move it over to the right. Now let's switch to the Debug Perspective and switch back to the Java Perspective. And we can see that the Package Explorer view is still detached, just how we left it. As we saw in a prior lesson, the same thing is true when we exit and restart Eclipse. It will remember exactly how we left the workbench and when we restart, it will put the workbench back in that same configuration. When we're moving things around, it's easy to get our workbench all messed up. If that happens, we can of course just put things back in order manually or we can quickly go back to the default starting point of the perspective just by selecting Window, Reset Perspective. And since we might be undoing a lot of work, we get this warning message. But if we go ahead and click OK, then it puts the perspective back, in this case the Java perspective, back to the default starting point. Notice that now the search views have been closed and we have the default layout and content for the Java perspective. Now what if we've spent a lot of time getting our workbench laid out just the way we want and we want to make sure that we can get back to this layout in the future? Well we can do this in two different ways. First, we could customize an existing perspective with the window Save Perspective As. Save Perspective As and then select the perspective name. This will change the default setting of the selected perspective to the current workbench layout. Now it might even be better to create our own perspective and that way we don't lose the ability to use the standard Eclipse perspectives. We can create our own perspective the same way. We just drag things around, open whatever views we want and then save this perspective using the window Save Perspective As. And then, if we give it our own name, we'll have created a new perspective. Let's try it. First, we'll make some changes to the workbench and then save our configuration as a new perspective. Let's uh, detach the outline view. 
We'll add the search view by saying show view search. So that adds a search view down here. And let's maximize the edit area by clicking on the book. Now we'll go window, save perspective as, and we'll just call it my Java. So this will create a new perspective called my Java since we're not using any of the pre-existing perspectives. Say OK. And now we can switch. Now we're in the My Java perspective. We can switch so we can go debug. That instantly goes to the debug perspective. We can go My Java that takes us back to the one we just created. Or we can go Java to go back to the original Java perspective. Now if you remember from a prior lesson, we can open a new window using the window new window command. So we can open a whole new window. Let's make it a little smaller here so we can see it. And we can have one perspective open in the new window. So for example here we've got the my Java perspective open in one window and then the regular Java perspective open in another. Next, let's look at some other perspective options. As we've seen, a perspective automatically lays out a group of views on the workbench. If we add or delete a view or change the layout, this change is remembered by Eclipse unless we run the reset perspective command. Perspectives also control the contents of the main toolbar up here and some of the menus, some of the pull down menus. Let's try customizing the toolbar and menus of our My Java perspective. First, let's close our second window here. And then let's switch to the My Java perspective on our window here. Okay, so now we've got My Java perspective selected. Now to customize the toolbar and menus for a perspective, we select Window Customize Perspective. There are two tabs on this window. The first tab, called Shortcuts, controls what menus are offered to us in the File New, the Open Perspective, and the Window Show View menus. So these three menu choices we can control and can be different for different perspectives. As an example, let's make it a little easier to add a new XML file and a new scrapbook file in our My Java perspective. First, let's look at how this works before we change the perspective. We'll close this window, and when we go File, New, we can see that we don't have the option for scrapbook or for a new XML file unless we dive into here. We have to go Other and then under XML we can see XML file and under Java Run Debug the scrapbook page is buried under here. So let's say we want to make those two options available right on the first part of the new menu. So to do that we go Window Customize Perspective we're at the new submenu here. So now we'll select Java Run Debug and select the scrapbook page. And again, we'll go XML and select Create New XML File. Press OK. And now when we're in our My Java perspective and we go File New, we see XML or scrapbook page right on the first set of options, right on this top level menu, and we don't have to dive down into there. They're still here. If we go down into the other, they're still here, but we don't have to dive into the other. We can see them right on the first level menus. Now, of course, if we go back to the Java perspective, they'll still be unaffected. So File New, 
we don't see those in the Java perspective. We only see those that only changes the my Java perspective. Now let's go back to the customize perspective and customize the toolbar. So we'll go window, customize perspective. This time we'll select the commands tab. The first column shows the current items selected for the toolbars and menus. The second column shows the menu bar details. This lists which menu, if any, runs this command. For example, if we highlight breakpoints, we can see that this breakpoints option supplies six menu choices under the run menu. The third column shows the toolbar details. This indicates whether the command can be run from the main toolbar. Note that some commands, like the breakpoints, are only run from the menus. Other commands, like annotation navigation, are only run from the toolbar. Others, like edit navigation, can be run either from the menu under the navigate menu or from a button on the toolbar. As you might expect, a command must either be accessible from the menu or from the toolbar, otherwise we couldn't run it. Now to see how this works, let's add a command group to our perspective. We'll add working set manipulation down here. And this gives us two menu choices under the Edit menu. And then it also gives us the same options available on the toolbar. We'll press OK. And now look at our toolbar. And now we see that we've got two new buttons on the toolbar. Add the selected elements to a working set. Remove selected elements. And if we look at the Edit menu, we have two new choices on the menu as well. Now we're not using working sets so these are grayed out but we've added them to our perspective. At this point we've customized our My Java perspective but we haven't yet saved our customizations. So if we did window reset perspective or window close perspective right now before we've done our save we would lose our changes. So let's save our customizations by selecting Window, Save Perspective As. We'll select My Java, press OK, say yes, we know we're overriding it. And now we've saved our customizations, so even if we close the perspective or reset the perspective, our customizations will be preserved. Since we can create new perspectives, we also need to be able to delete them. There's a small trick to remember when you delete a perspective. To see it, let's create a new perspective and then we'll delete it. So we'll go Window, Save Perspective As, and this time we'll call the perspective Delete Me, so we know that we want to delete it. We'll press OK. Now we'll go Window, Preferences, General, perspectives and we want to delete the perspective so we'll highlight delete me and then we can press the delete button. Now when we do this it says unable to delete perspective delete me it has open instances. Now if we think about it that makes sense because we're in the delete me perspective so it doesn't want us to delete the perspective we're in. So let's switch back to the Java perspective and try this again. So we go Window, Preferences, we'll select the Delete Me perspective, hit the Delete button, and we get the same darn message, Unable to Delete Perspective. It has open instances. The reason for this is because even though we've switched away from the Delete Me perspective, it's still open. To close it, we need to switch back to the Delete Me perspective, and then select Window Close Perspective. So now the Delete Me Perspective is not only unselected, it's also closed. 
So now we can go Window, Preferences, Select, Delete Me, press Delete, and now it's deleted our perspective. At this point, we've learned how to customize the edit and view areas of the workbench and how to use and customize perspectives. This gives us the ability to change the workbench to fit our needs and to have Eclipse remember our customized layout and configuration. In the next lesson, we'll look at some capabilities of the Eclipse help system and explore some other useful tips and tricks for getting the most from Eclipse. This is the end of Lesson 3. I'm Mark Dexter saying, so long for now.